Hello and happy Thursday. Uh, my name is Maggie and I am here with Purse Strings. Um, Purse Strings comes to provide free financial education, um, just a one-stop shop to get some advice, get some knowledge, get some know-how. Um, but then it's always, you know, who can I go to? Who can I trust to put things in transition or transaction? So we have top tier financial professionals who love to serve the female market. Um, and we call those our Purse Strings approved professionals. Those are the same professionals that we bring on live with us every week. Um, and so Cheryl here is one of our Purse Strings Approved Professionals, and we're so excited to have you on today um, while we dive into net worth. Um, but before we get started with all that, we love a little intro of who you are and what you do. Yeah, great. Thanks, hi, Maggie. It's nice to see you. Um, my name is Cheryl Kasabski, and my company is called Self Worth, and I am what's called a money coach or a financial counselor. And what I do is work with clients on um, improving their sense of financial security. Um, I work with them on getting out of debt, on putting a budget together, on figuring out how to save for the things that they really value and love. Um, and I also work with them on their frame of mind. So mm. uh, we're thinking about money and how that affects the actions that we take in regards to money. Because yeah. sometimes uh, we tend to get in our own way. We undervalue ourselves. We don't ask for the raise that we should. We uh, Sometimes you know, that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, I work with clients on that side as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, the group that we're in today Really, we just wanted, we wanted to start again because at the basics and kind of understand our net worth. Um, so what is net worth um, and, and why, why do we even want to know this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, as we work with money, we want to know if we're moving forward in, uh, towards our goals or not. And often, more often than not, we tend to think about how we're doing financially based on what we're earning what our income is. Um, but that's actually not a great indicator because it is actually just um, telling us how much money is coming in. Um, it's not taking into account how much money we're spending. And most of us are spending a really large percentage of what we bring in uh, each month, mm -hmm. um, not frivolously or anything, you know, on things that we need and, and want, but, um, so if we're thinking about, you know, what money would be available to use if we needed to get our hands on it, either for an emergency or let's say some special opportunity comes up to purchase something or to go into a business with somebody, we want to know what kind of money can I get my hands on if I need it. So that's what net worth does. It's actually... Uh, a tool to help you evaluate how you're doing financially. Um, and it's a tool that we can use regularly. So some people look at it monthly. Some people look at it um, just a couple times a year. Some people actually only look at it once a year. And obviously we want that number to be going up over time. Um, but um you know, before we get into that, let's get into what's how do you, how do you actually tell what your net worth is? So, uh, Meg, if you can bring the slides up. Yep, let me pull those up. Share screen, share screen, window, share. Um, oh, all right, you guys can see that. Yeah. So um, obviously we want to know what our uh, worth is. You can go to the next slide. Um, so here's how you're going to calculate it. Um, you can go again. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at our assets. So what is an asset? An asset is anything that we either own, cash available. Um, it is what the, the money we could get our hands on if we need to. So what's included in this is what's in any checking accounts that you have, in any savings accounts that you have, um, stocks and bonds, mutual funds, ETFs are all part of this, as well as CDs and your money market accounts. 
all of those things, just so you're aware of this, are called liquid um, funds. So what liquid funds means is that if we wanted to take that money out of our uh, stocks or bonds, um, we could do so reasonably easily. And so that means there isn't any federal laws about pulling the money out too soon. And there are minimal costs to doing so. So sometimes on the CDs in money markets, there'll be a penalty of a kind to pull the money out. But generally, it's going to be a fairly low dollar amount to do that. Then we have our retirement accounts that can include IRAs, pensions, 401ks, if you have them through your work. Uh, if you work for a not-for-profit, it might be a 401c3 or something instead of a 401k. Those are illiquid um, assets, and those we could get our money on, uh, our hands on if we really, really needed to, but there are stiffer um, penalties that we'll have to pay for doing so. So we only want to be pulling money out of those if it's truly an emergency. Then we have life insurance that sometimes has a cash value. And so sometimes we can you know, turn that in and receive cash. Um, if we own any real estate, so our own homes, or if we own um, real estate that we're using for rental property, if we sold that, what would that sell for in today's market? So to determine that piece, you're going to have to do a little bit of research and sort of go on Zillow or other sites and look to see what pro uh, properties like the one you have are valued at in your neighborhood at this time. So we're going to use that as a guide. Um, that's also true for your vehicles. So for car, motorcycle, boat, uh, RV. Again, you're going to go to the Blue Book, Kelly Blue Book, and look it up and see if I sold this today, what would it be worth? And then there are collectibles. So we're only talking about those collectibles that actually have a fair amount of value. Um, I had a client actually for a while who, um, when he was a, from the time he was a child, he collected toys. And it turned out that his collection wound up being worth Oh, probably fifty thousand dollars by the time. Um, and so that actually really served him. He uh, wound up um, in uh, needing to move from his location and was able to sell some of those toys and get his hands on that money and be able to use it towards the down payment on this other property that he needed. Um, so sometimes they're uh, expensive to determine the value of those. You need to go to this jewelry. You're going to go to a jewelry store and ask them to evaluate that for you. Um, if it's, uh, you know, you need to find an expert in whatever it is that you collect. And that is what we can tell you. Um, all right. So those are our assets. What we're doing initially when we're figuring this out is we're going to add up each of those things that you own the money that you have, and then add up to see what the total is. And that total is the total of your assets. Okay, now go to the next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to jump in there and, and just reiterate some of those great points that you make because there's first the things that are in your bank account, um, the things that you can kind of get right away that you kind of call liquid assets. We could get our hands on right away. Um, but then we do have some of those accounts that are not liquid, um, like our 401ks and things like that, where um, if you're if you're not, uh, I think it's 59 and a half, they'll take a lot of your money. So it's really not money that you want to grab right now. Yes. Um, but then when you look at for your house, you want the house value of it today is the same with your car. So not what you bought it for, but what the value is today and the same then with any valuables. Yeah. Um, so really everything you own by the end of the day is on that sheet. Yeah. Now things like your house and your cars and the, and the valuables, the collectibles, the day after you've bought them, they have reduced in value. Right. So we want to be conscious of that. So, um, you know, we tend to think when we go to sell things, um, even houses and stuff, most of the time we overvalue what we have. 
And actually, if we went to sell them, we'd probably not be able to get that amount of money for them. So that's why you want to check in with an expert or check against um, documentation to make sure that you're only thinking it's worth what it's actually worth. Because we get attached to this stuff, especially houses and things, right? Right. Oh my God, it's such a great house. I designed it myself. It's, you know, exactly <laughs> what I wanted. Only that's exactly the way you want it. Maybe not the way somebody else wants it. It has a lot of personal value. But. Yeah, exactly. So once everything is added up, we'll, then we'll keep moving on here. Yeah. So you add that all up. And then we're going to look at what's called your liabilities. So liabilities are anything that you owe. Uh, money that you have to come up with to, to pay things. So the first one is credit card debt. So you're going to take that. Then you're going to take any personal loans. So these will be loans that you've taken out from a bank or uh, other um, credit union or something like that. That uh, is called a personal loan. Your student loans are going to be included in this if you have them. Then for your home and other real estate and stuff, it's the dollar amount that you still owe towards your mortgage or towards whatever it is that you purchased. So on the uh, asset side, we have the total value of those things. And on the liability side is how much is left that you have to pay. Okay. Um, and we're also including in here if you owe money to family or friends. So that's money that uh, you're liable for as well. And so then we add up all of these liabilities um, to see how much debt we actually have. Okay, then the next one. So then we are simply taking the total of our assets, subtracting the total of our liabilities, and that equals our net worth. So again, that net worth means how much do I have available to me if I need it? Um, and as we get older, hopefully we are growing our assets. We are working, you know, each month we're paying down our mortgage or our car payment. Um, each month, uh, hopefully we're putting some money into savings. Um, if we had debt, hopefully every month we're working on paying that down. And so this should be going up over time unless you are adding new debt to the process. So that's the thing we really, really, really want to work on is avoiding adding new debt. Unless, of course, so some debt is helpful to you. So we always want, you know, if you're looking at going back to school or something that's going to increase your income over time, that debt might actually be a valuable debt if you've done your research and you see that you can make that money back doing what you're going to school for. So the problem that we have with schooling and stuff is usually it's a great um, thing to spend your money on. But if you're in a field, let's say like social work or something, and it's going to cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars to go to the school of your choice, and you're only going to wind up making thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, you're going to be in debt for most of your life. As opposed to if you're spending the money on, I don't know, business degree or something, and your earning potential at that point could be upwards of a hundred thousand dollars you're going to be able to pay that back fairly quickly. So you want to be thinking about that as you're moving forward. Okay, I uh, found online a um, net worth template. Did, did you get that, Maggie? Yes, I did. I can put it on the link that you, oh, here, let me stop sharing. And I can put that in the chat for everybody. Great. So um, I found this, uh, it's a Google Sheets template that um, you can use to calculate your net worth either monthly or however often you want to do it. It's actually set up to do it monthly. And so what that means is just every month you're going to go into that template and just put in this month, I have this much money in checking. This month, I have this much money in my savings account. 
this month my house is worth this. This month, um, you know, I paid, you know, I have this much in credit card debt. This much, you know, and then it will automatically calculate for you what the bottom line is, and that'll be your net worth. So um, that's kind of how we calculate it. And know that when you go to take out a new loan, that company is actually looking at your net worth in addition to your credit score. So I know people have been really, really, you know, concerned about what their credit score is these days. Right. You know, we have lots of ads on television about, you know, uh, use this uh, tool or another tool to determine your credit score. And that is important. But we also have, as part of your credit score, actually, is the piece that says debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. And so that debt to income ratio is kind of your net worth. So they're looking at what do you have and what do you owe? And that difference between the two is the debt to income ratio. So that's why this is important too. As well as for just your own peace of mind that you know if an emergency occurs, if you become ill, if um, let's say you even decided you wanted to have a baby and you were not able to have a baby naturally and that you needed to do in vitro fertilization or something. Um, You'd want to know, oh, you know what? I can get my hands on that money in order to be able to afford to do this. And I need to be able to do that now. You know, I can't wait until I uh, raise the money, you know, get the money together for a down payment or whatever. I really need to take care of this while I'm still in my 30s or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a way that you can figure out, oh, you know what? I've got this money in these different places. I could, you know, sell my car. I could do this, I could do this. And then I'd be able to raise the money. This is also important if you should lose your job for any reason. Yeah. You know, because we, we tend to think that the only way we can have money come into our lives is by working. But I got to tell you, there was a period in my life I, um, I was working actually for my father and one day realized that it was a really bad idea that I was thinking about. He was thinking about it totally differently than I was. I was thinking I was working for him. He was thinking he was giving me a gift. Oh, that's miscommunication. So when I realized that, I thought, okay, I got to go. I got to get out of this right away. This is not healthy for either one of us. And, um, and I left. I was pretty young, a little bit. Without really thinking about if I had money put in savings or anything in order to leave my job that day. And because I quit instead of was fired, I was not eligible for unemployment. And I was just like, oh my God, what have I done? But you know what? I kind of looked around. I had jewelry that I sold. I had, actually, in my case, I'm an artist, I had artwork that I could sell. Um, and so I was able to make it for a couple months while I was figuring out what the next step was going to be. Um, yeah. I got to tell you, that was incredible peace of mind, knowing that, you know, oh my God, I wasn't going to suddenly be behind on my rent or whatever. So uh, it can be a really, really useful tool. Um, I, I think you've given a lot of great tips today about how net worth can really help you um, and kind of figure out where you are and almost feel confident or protected moving forward or just kind of laying that path. Um, so if someone, you know, sat down and figured out their net worth, um, what would be a good then next step um, to then carry forward? Yeah. So what it is, it's actually just information. So it's telling you, oh, you know, maybe it's telling you, oh, my gosh, my debt's gotten out of control. I really need to work on this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm way behind in starting to save. I must start to do that. And so it's a tool to help you identify problem areas. And so that's the other piece about this. And, and as women, many of us are kind of in a fog about money. I don't know if it's, you know, it's not particular to women. There's a bunch of men that don't pay attention to. But for women, many of us have been actually taught to be unconscious about money. Right. Um, and, you know, I know my parents never, ever talked to me about that. They assumed I'd get married and my husband would take care of it all. 
Now, I didn't get married till I was 38, and I married someone who couldn't afford to take care of me. And so I wound up having to, you know, take care of myself the whole time anyway. But I had to teach myself along the way um, what I needed to know because nobody ever bothered to teach me. And in our society, nobody really teaches financial uh, literacy. So we do here at First Strings, yes, and we, that is what is happening today because I yes. am done with this. Yes. What I mean by that is in school. Yes, you yes, know, I, know, I know. You know, we're not, we ought to be having that as part of curriculum in high school. Agreed. And as a society in general, we do not. There are occasionally schools here and there that do it, but it's rare. Right. And um, so part of this is, okay, finding some support. Um, through purse strings, through hiring a coach, through joining a financial group of some kind or taking a class because it's frightening. It's an area that we feel stupid in for the most part. And when we feel stupid about stuff, we really don't want to take it on. And um, so I cannot tell you how rare it is that I ask someone, hey, you know, do you know what you're... Uh, liabilities are? Do you know what your assets are? Almost nobody does. In fact, I, I could say to somebody, you know, how much do you spend on groceries? Almost nobody can tell me that. So, and, and there's no reason you should have known that, but going forward, you need to know it's imperative that you know that. And the reason it's imperative that you know that is because you want always to know whether you're married or not, that should something occur, you know how to take care of yourself. Yeah. And you have the skills in place, you have the money in place, um, you understand what you're looking at when you look at your bank statements and can move forward confidently. Because I gotta tell you, I have more clients that are either divorced or whose spouse has passed away. And it's a terrible time in addition to mourning the loss of their relationship and the loss of their loved one, they're suddenly having to learn all this information about their finances. Yeah. And so um, better to take the time to do that when it's not an emergency yeah. and uh, you have much more bandwidth. It's very difficult to learn when you're really stressed out. And so um, that's kind of how we want to be thinking about this net worth is it's saying to you, you know, how am I doing? Am I, and Determining what your net worth should be is personal. Yeah. So there is nothing that I'm going to say to any client, this is how much money you should have. But understanding your finances also means understanding yourself and um, what do you value? What amount of money makes you feel safe and secure? And once you know that, that ought to be your goal that I'm going to put together this amount of money in these various pockets, you know, in real estate, in my retirement plan, in my safety net, um, so that I am always feeling safe and secure. And that allows you to make decisions in your life based on your desires and your values rather than need and fear. So much of it is just being proactive rather than reactive. So we have the most options available. And really, if something bad's going to happen in life, life is a roller coaster. That's how it goes. We want to have the most options when anything happens. Yeah. Um, the, the last question I want to finish up with today is um, money coach or financial coach is sometimes a new term for people. So could you kind of explain what you could help people with and what that process kind of looks like? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, the, and there is a huge confusion about this. Um, and that's because there are two different kinds of financial professionals. Money coaches or financial counselors help you with learning how to manage your money. And so that includes, as I say, it's going to be, how do you get out of debt? It's going to be, how do I create a budget for myself? How do I save money for the things that I really value? How do I choose the other kind of, of expert, which is a financial advisor? The financial advisor is going to help you with investing. 
So as a money coach, I talk to clients about the different kinds of investments that are available, but I do not help clients choose a particular uh, account to invest in. Financial advisors do that. But what I also work with clients on is how do you choose a financial counselor that's right for you? Um, so that when you're working with that other person, you feel comfortable. Um, I was just talking to a client this morning who, um, she's a, an older woman and her financial advisor was really condescending and you know fairly obnoxious to her actually. Um, we don't want that. We want no. to be working with people who are going to educate us as we go and um, take our points of view into consideration yep. and listen to us, right? Um, and so, you know, that's part of what I do too, is to teach people and help people make those choices. Um, and as I say, in my case, this is not true with all financial coaches, but um, my certification is a financial recovery counselor. And so my certification also includes the internal work. So many, always how much money we have relates to how much we value ourselves and as women society has undervalued us still today always yeah. and so we need to learn some skills into understanding what we've heard and been taught and internalized about our value versus how magnificent we really are and how much we really deserve to be paid well. Yes. Um, so, you know, and that affects the choices we make about which jobs we choose. It affects um, the way we spend our money because a lot of times we're spending money to help ourselves feel better and um, putting ourselves in jeopardy at times because we feel like we need this fix almost right away uh, in order to maybe make us feel less lonely or make us feel des deserving. You know, maybe it is that we've worked really, really hard this week and feel like we deserve, uh, you know, some special treat um, because we worked so hard. That happens quite often for women. And, um, Looking, though, to see what we really need. So, you know, if it is that we're feeling lonely, for example, if we go out and we buy a dress, we're still going to be lonely. Um, so that doesn't, it helps fix it for a second because we feel like we've done something fun. And then, but that main need is still there. So part of uh, financial coaching is helping you understand what you personally need and want. And that's different for everybody, as I say. Um, I had a male client at one time, and we were going through, you know, what he was giving himself as needs to spend money on. And he said to me, so, you know, in this area of needs, it was um, a cigar and a glass of whiskey every day. And I said, okay, you got to explain to me why that's a need, you know. Well, what it was is he he was a designer of furniture. Mm -hmm. and his days were packed and he needed some time each day to have time just to think and be creative. And so when he would take that time, it would take him you know, 45 minutes or so to finish the cigar and the whiskey, um, it relaxed him and allowed him to have this creative moment. And that actually, you know, in a non-direct way, brought money into his business. Right. You know, so it was a valuable expense, even though when I looked at it, I was like, what? You know, um, so only we know what we need. Right. And, um, we want to make sure that we have the money to fulfill those needs. Awesome. Um, we did have one question come in. It says, what about the saying assets make you money and liabilities cost you money? Because in some financial statements, your house and your car are liabilities. Yeah. So that, that's the piece about, so it is an asset. Remember I said that when you're looking at your house and your car, you're putting in the value of it today. So they're both, they are an asset because you are, if you sold it, money would come in. But the liability part is for many of us, unless you own it outright, um, 
you still have to pay for the balance of that mortgage or that loan. And so that's why they, they're kind of both. And there are certainly some ways of thinking about it. There are some uh, financial advisors who don't use those because they're not as liquid. Mm. Some actually won't use your 401ks in retirement either because um, they're thinking you shouldn't be dipping into that money um, because of the penalties. But if there's an emergency, it's like, and you got to get your hands on the money. Who cares about the penalties? You got to get your hands on the money. Mm -hmm. So that's why I include it in both places. It's an asset. And if you owe on it, it's also a liability. Awesome. That's a great question. And I love when people submit their questions because, um, yeah, you know, it can be confusing to understand. Um, and so, you know, if you use the worksheet or anything else and write it out and have questions, feel free to reach out either to Purse Strings or to Cheryl. And we're yes. more than happy to help you with that um, because I get, you know, once you put pen to paper, some things get a little um, confusing. You don't know if it goes here or there. So whatever it might be. Yeah. And my website is self-worth.coach. Um, and you're welcome to email me at Cheryl at self-worth.coach. Uh, your questions um, I have on my site. Um, actually, if you download the um, that uh, sheet I was talking about to uh, help you, um, the spreadsheet, um, that is automatically going to put you on the mailing list that I have. And I send out a newsletter almost every week. Sometimes I miss it. Um, that is an article about money in some way. Um, awesome. And so you'll automatically be put on that list. If, you, if you're not interested, just simply unsubscribe and that's fine. Um, and uh, I also have on the site on the top that you can schedule a 15 minute conversation with me. Uh, you can ask questions during that time. We can check to see if you're interested in financial coaching. Um, so there's a lot of resources for you. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on today, Cheryl, and presenting to this community. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's a great place to get started is with your net worth. Um, so Purse Strings is going to start joining this group every other week. So we're excited to be here. So always feel free to submit your questions or topics, whatever you might have. And then when you need a professional to help you to go put things in transition or transaction, um, call one of our Purse Strings approved professionals. Uh, they are all here to help and to serve you. Um, so everyone have a great rest of your week. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Bye. Bye-bye.